Channos are here. Sometimes you want to apply an effect to only a portion of the clip. You can see that here where we've applied a black and white filter to the background here while keeping my daughter in full color as she dances the Nutcracker Dance of the Flowers. This is easy to do once you learn how to use the Track Matte feature in Adobe Premiere Pro, which I'll demonstrate in this tutorial. Okay, so how did we create this? Let me start from the subclip that I used in this particular sequence, and then I'll create a new sequence. So I'll, here's the subclip. I'll drag that onto the new item. And when you're using a track mat, you have to duplicate the video portion of the clip and place it directly on top of the original. So to select just the video portion, I click the Option key on the Mac, Alt key on Windows, click to select just that clip, right-click, choose Copy, tell Premiere to put it on Video 2, and then I'll Control-V to paste. So here's the two clips that I need, and they look pretty much like one clip. Next, I create the title I'm going to use as the mat. So I come up here, New Title, Default Still. And you want to pick a shape that matches the shape that you're trying to impact in your video. Ellipse is what I want to work with here. So I'll just draw this ellipse over my daughter. And once I have that, I drag that here and put it over the clip. And what it looks like is an ellipse over my daughter. Everything else is still in uh, full color. Now I need to apply the track matte effect to the top clip. So that's in the keying folder. And apply it to the top watt flowers clip and come in here and tell it that the matte is on video 3. So the matte disappears, but we still have full color. Nothing looks different. Let me lose the audio here. Okay, so here's what's going on. Basically, we've divided the clip into two components as divided by the mat here. If we turn off the track output for the back or for the bottom clip, we see everything's black, which means this portion here is being supplied by video one, while this portion here, let me get my daughter in there, is being supplied by video two. So if you want to apply an effect that affects all this, you apply it to video one. If you want to apply an effect that affects just the portion here, you apply it to video two. So if I wanted to go black and white as I did in the demo that we saw, I just drag this down here, choose this, and we see the back, which is affected by video one, is black and white while the front is still full color. If I wanted to just affect this portion here that's covered with the mat, then I drag the effect onto video two. And now my daughter's in black and white. Okay, so now my daughter's in black and white. And then how do you, how do you make the mat follow the object around? Easiest if you turn this off because then you can see it very clearly. Drag it here. You're going to essentially move the title around to match the motion that you're seeking. So make sure keyframes are enabled. If you were going to scale it, you would set a keyframe for scaling. I'm not going to do that so we don't need to. And then it's just a question of adjusting the positioning of the mask to follow, in this case, the dancer and you can get pretty much as, as, uh, as precise as you want. You know, she's moving slightly. And let me just go to, you know, these are all the adjustments I made in this one to, um, to follow her throughout the clip. So it can be time consuming, but you can get as precise as you want to be. So, and let's go back to this here and get the clip looking the way we want it to look, which is the back black and white, the front full color, and that's the effect that we wanted to produce. So let's take a look at a, a little bit of an iteration on a project like that. So this is, um, this is me, and what I want to focus on here is how to get a soft edge 
on the inside of the mask. So sometimes it really doesn't matter. So if you're applying a blur filter, and here I'm going to apply the blur filter to the top clip because I wanted to adjust only inside the mask, not outside the mask. So if I, if I put a blur filter in, kind of the witness protection thing, you don't really see that there's a hard edge here. But if I'm adjusting brightness and contrast, particularly if I'm bringing it down, you can see the hard edge here. And you may not want that showing in some instances. So let me load the mask. And this is what we're working with. So the basic ellipse is this object here to which I've added a shadow. And if we turn the shadow on and off, we see the effect. And the size is the size of the shadow behind the ellipse. And then the spread is the smoothness of that shadow. But no matter what we do with the smoothness here, we never see this hard edge go away. And the only way to do that is, simple enough, apply a blur effect to the mat itself. So if I toggle this and I applied a blurriness of 50 to the mask itself, not obviously to the video clip that I was uh, modifying, then we see the hard edge go away. So here's without the blur, and you can see the hard edge here. Even though you've got the shadow here that's soft, you can still see the hard edge. But if you apply the fast blur filter, the hard edge goes away. So that's how you use the track mat filter to apply an effect to only a portion of a clip. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.